Yeah, what is it, Monson? Uh, Mac, I'm sorry to bother you at the commissioner's office, but I thought you'd like to know that on this Karen Barnes case, her parents have confirmed that she's alive and well in Florence, Italy. It looks like somebody set the whole thing up to make it look like Derek Mason did her in. Now, who the hell would have done a thing like that? Well, we don't know that, Mac, but the uh, facts of Barnes's handwriting that Mason had sent through from New York confirms that the letter that was found at the motel was a forgery. Well, I still want to know. Who's responsible? Well, I'd like to know that too, Mac, but I'll get on it first thing in the morning, okay? Because I've been here for 15 hours, and in case you've forgotten, tomorrow's Paul's grand jury day. How could I have forgotten when I put in an 18-hour day on it myself, and I'm not through yet? Listen, Mac, I wasn't saying that you don't work. What's wrong? Well, I thought I detected a note of irritability in Mac's voice just before he hung up on me. Oh, well, don't take it personally, okay? I just got released from that meeting myself, and it's grueling. What is taking so long? It's Hastings. He's being very thorough and nitpicking, but he's determined to give Paul a fair hearing. And well, I hope it is fair because Barbara's really coming unglued over it. You're not looking so great yourself, pal. Well, come on, girl. I mean, I'm done in. I've just been here for 15 hours and Mac's still not satisfied. Mm, you look like a kid who needs a hug and is, doesn't want to ask for it. Come here. You see through me every day. I see through you. <laughs> well, well, well. What does that mean, darling? Well, well, well. I'm just very, very surprised to see the two of you here together. Why? You had a meeting with Tony o earlier today on the very same subject. Oh, am I taking Freedom Fund? Yes, Lucinda is about to make another donation. I mean, I'd be very happy to see the good guys win again. I just hope that you're not getting your hopes up about Sierra. False hopes? They're not false hopes. Don't worry about me. I don't know why you got such a sting in your tail. Didn't I give you my blessing, you and Ellie? Oh, that's right. Yes, I yeah. remember that you did. I'm just wondering if... If it was sincere, based on what I just heard, Ellie's PR trip extended yet again. Well, dear, she does have to work for a living. You're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's none of my doing, and she doesn't work for me. She works for Olivia, but I won't get on the phone. I'll talk to vice presidents. Yeah, Heads okay, will all right, roll all right, so that Ellie no, doesn't... No, really, no, I'm it. sure Ellie wouldn't want that. I just hope it doesn't become a common occurrence. I'll keep an eye on it. Thank you very much. I'm off to the farm to pick her up, and then we're off to a nice country inn. If you see Lily, would you please tell her to call me the minute she hears anything at all from Derek? Why? What about him? He's being questioned by the police because of the disappearance of his secretary they or whatever she was. He had something to do with that? Well, that's why they're questioning him. And Lily vows that as soon as he gets free of the police, they are going to go to Europe. But I'm not going to let them over my dead body. I'm going to go and sit on their luggage. Yeah, you just don't learn to, you just don't learn to <laughs> stop manipulating other people's lives. Your daughter is grown up. She's married. Why don't you let her go? Jeff, what do you mean Derek tried to kill you? Where are you? A cottage. Uh... I, I came out here to check on the Barnes case. I just talked to Derek a few minutes ago from the police station. He's been completely cleared. He lied to you. He was here. Uh, pulled a gun. Are you badly hurt? Not sure. Uh, sort of dazed. I'm calling an ambulance. No. Uh, no. That'd get Derek in more trouble. I don't like that. I just need some help getting home. You can do it, Lily. Hurry. I've been cleared. 
Hal got through to Karen's parents, and they said that she called them from a plane en route to Italy. I, I'm on the way to pick you up. As soon as I tell you how much I love you, we can be off on a plane of our own. Yes, Hal Munson, please. Hal, it's Lily Mason. Hi, Lily. What can I do for you? Has Derek been released? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, he has. Um, everything seems to check out. I'm kind of glad you called, though. I'd like you to give your husband a gentle warning about his temper. When I walked into the office, I overheard Derek telling Jeff Dolan to stay away from you or he'd kill him. Now, I'm sure that he really didn't mean it, but it's still not a good idea to go around making threats like that. Now, well, there's obviously some bad blood between them, but uh, Jeff's a nice guy, and he's a good cop, and I think he's genuinely fond of you. I know. Thanks, Hal. Bye. Everybody. Iva and Emma are upstairs right now. Listen, I gotta go. Um, if Derek goes by here, tell him I went to the cottage to help Jeff, okay? Jeff, well, wait, hold, wait a minute. Someone who's so fond of me, why do you always think the worst of me? I don't know, maybe history has a way of getting in the way. All right, darling, let me be sincere. Pick up your Ellie, pick up your delightful Bryant. And bring them both to dinner, okay? You'll make Rose's day. You know, I, you know, I'd really rather just have dinner at a small country inn. Yeah, getting stodgy in your middle years. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ellie doesn't complain. <laughs> Look, why don't you concentrate on getting John back? Concentrate on oh, business. Yeah. Because you know, when you're turned on, nobody does it better. In business. Right, Tony. Well, yes, I'd say Lucinda taught both of us just about everything we know. Gosh, thanks for the compliments, all of you. That's just wonderful. Look, don't worry about business. Business is getting along just fine without me, and I could say the same thing for John. I gotta go. No false hopes, remember? Well, that was a wonderful performance. Oh, darling, thank me from you. Oh, the master of duplicity. Look. Well, I just hope Craig doesn't find out what you're doing to keep him from marrying Ellie. He's not going to find out from me, and you're not going to tell him either, because he'd be mad at me, but he'd kill you. Yes, well, I don't want to take any more of your time. If I could just have the check. Very good. I want to take a thanks you. Have a good day. Have a hot date with my beautiful designer tonight? No, no, no. I'm, Olivia's getting quite boring now. She keeps asking the same questions about Sierra. Of course, I know where the questions are coming from. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow before the grand jury. How did you know that I was going to testify? Uh, just educated guests. Of course, they'd want to speak with the person who had contact with James before his death. In fact, the person who hid him. Uh, I'm going to go back to our office because I know that Tom and Mac and Hastings are going to bring the meeting back here when they finish the dinner break. Uh, yeah, well, I'd prefer to miss Mac myself after our brief conversation. Yeah, good idea. You know, Hastings is determined to give Paul a fair trial. I hope he gets it. I hope so, too. Bye. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Uh, listen, hey, hon, I hope you realize that what you walked in on, I mean, that... I know, I know, I around. know. I should be used to it by now, though I'm not very thrilled to walk in and find my husband in Margot's arms, but my only concern right now is for Paul. Are you thrilled to be in my arms? That's my only concern. Thrilled. Always. Good. And what do you say? We go home, have some dinner, and turn in early, huh? Well, that'd be great, but I don't know where Paul is. He called Fashions and said he wanted to spend some time with Andy. Hmm. Well, then let's go out for dinner, and then we'll hook up with Paul later, if that's what he wants. Deal. Deal. So, tell me, how was the Hastings investigation? Well, I don't know anything else but what Margot said just now, but just think, tomorrow it'll all be over, and we'll get back to our normal lives, including making plans for a baby. <laughs> when you say it, I almost believe it. You know that? Good, because it's true. Um, I, excuse me, I hate to break this up, but, uh, Tom and Mac just arrived, and looking out the window, I can see the steam coming out of Mac's ears. Thanks for the warning, we're out sure. of here. Oh, hey, have you seen Jeff Dolan? Uh, he just went home, but he's been working here overtime on this missing persons case, where we really don't have a missing person, so I hope he's getting some rest. You wanna run that by me again? Uh, not really, because it's very confusing and it's only half solved. Bye. <laughs>
Shocked when Bob told you, huh? What's this world coming to? Oh, I think you know very well, John. All you have to do is look around. Andy is the product of his times. I'm interested in your attitude. What do you think we should do? Well, I'm not sure I have any advice to offer. I must say, I don't find it unusual for someone Andy's age to be questioning the values with which he's been brought up. He sees that even the people he loves and respects don't always live by the rules. Well, I know Andy was upset by Tom and Margot's situation with Adam. Oh, yes. And with all due respect, John, since you separated from Lucinda, I'm sure Andy's noticed how much time you've been spending with Susan Stewart. Oh, come on. And you think it's something like that that drove him into the arms of a girl like Julie? I keep hearing a girl like Julie. What does that really mean? She's spirited and attractive, but I know that she and Duke were involved mm. mom we never really finished our conversation at memorial you see lucinda brought julie here from seattle to try to trap duke into marrying her you see she said that she was pregnant by him what well it turns out the child was by another man i gave her fifty thousand dollars to get out of town she got as far as chicago had an abortion and came back here and sunk her claws into Andy. Well, now, wait a minute. In all fairness to Julie, she did give you 47000 of the fifty back. And she's promised to repay you as soon as she can save money from the job that she has at Mona Lisa. She's working for Lisa now? As a hostess. Lisa's crazy about her. I'm glad you came over to the apartment. It's nice having friends stopping by. Yeah. You know, it was a uh, pretty big shock when Bob told me you moved in with her, but I can see you two get along great. She makes me feel different from anyone else. I can tell you got the earring thing going there. <laughs> Yo, it was so weird at first, you know. I'm getting used to it now, though. I wonder if I'll ever get my life together the way you have. Sure you will, Paul. I mean, once this hearing thing's over, grand jury tomorrow, you go back to school, you find a fox that'll make you forget everything else. It happened to me, it'll happen to you, too. Thank you, Julie. Julie, would you please make sure that I get the check? Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I no, do. No, no, you hey, don't. Hey, 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 hey. Just let me know who wins, okay? Thank you. I told you before we got here tonight that this was my little present to say thank you. All right, all right. So you really have to get back to L.A.? No. Unfortunately, there's no place I really have to be, but... Until I figure out what I want to do, or until I fall in love, the way Derek <laughs> did, I think L.A. is as good, as good a place as any to be. And besides, Daddy's been so preoccupied lately, I've hardly seen him. And now Derek and Lily are off to Europe since this Karen mess has cleared up. You know, I still don't understand why Derek wanted you to call him if his father showed up at the farm. I don't know. They've always had this um, real love-hate relationship. And I think now Derek's trying to break the hold that Daddy has over him since Lily's come into his life. Oh, hi, Julie. How are you hi. Doing? Where's Lisa? She has a headache. She's upstairs. Oh. So I'm in charge tonight. Oh, well, looks like you're doing a great job. Listen, I had a long, long day at the castle, so I'm going to go upstairs to change and relax a little bit. But I'll be available if you need me. Okay, thanks. Hey, Shannon. How come a beautiful girl like you isn't involved with somebody? I have often asked myself that question, Julie. I thought you went back to the warehouse an hour ago. I did, but a man has to eat, and this is the best eatery in town. Perhaps if you're free later, you'd like to join me. I know how you hate to eat alone. It's a bummer. Jessica got called out of town right, right when you have your hearing. Yeah, I know. I was upset at first, too, but she couldn't be in the room with us anyway. Well, and it's like Emily keeps saying, all we gotta do is just keep telling the same stories we've been telling all along. It's just a routine thing. Stenbeck's relationships are almost as complex as the man himself. With all the witnesses you intend to call, you think you're going to be able to get it done in just one day? 
Maybe not. If your wife's still here, Tom, I'd like her to come in. Hughes, you step across the hall, please. Who's on away? I need a woman's opinion on something that still bothers me a bit. If you were Ms. Stewart and you just had a call from Stenbeck, and you'd phone the police to report it, and you're expecting Stenbeck's son for dinner, what would have prompted you to take time to dig out old love letters from this now-hated ex-lover and burn them in the bathroom sink before taking a shower? I don't know. I mean, I could certainly understand burning the letters, and especially if you're seeing someone new, but I... Why then? I mean, why not earlier or, or later? I agree. So, if she didn't burn James Stenbeck's love letters, what did she burn and why? How could Fenwick have misunderstood me? I was postponing my trip. I, I, I was not canceling the trip. For God's sake, I'm going to speak to Fenwick in the morning. It's not your fault, Matthew. But things have got to be run better around here. I noticed the silver, for example. You will take care of that. Yes, I mean, I'm stagnating. I cannot sit around here waiting for something that'll never happen. Well, I'll be happy to take you to the cottage myself. <sighs> Thank you, friend. I'll, I'll put you on hold, all right? Let me just call. See if Lily is there. Ah! Lily? Sorry to disappoint you, Lucinda. Oh, Niles. Have you heard anything? Yes. Karen's been found and my son's been cleared. You know, I've even managed to persuade the tempestuous lovers to postpone the European trip. At least for the time being. Oh, I'm so grateful. What can I do? Let's celebrate. Have dinner with me. I'd love it. But no dark glasses or oversized hats, eh? Give me an hour. That's too long. I'll be there in 20 minutes. You sound like you're on a tight schedule. I am. How about it? I'll do my best. Tell me, how did you persuade Derek with so much tension between you? I'll tell you over dinner. Right, I'm back on schedule. See you soon. Bye. Well, there was a big traffic accident, five-car pileup, there were ambulances, there were wreckers. It scared me. It scared you? Mm -hmm. Well, don't stop on my account. <laughs> Go right on ahead with what you're doing. Hi, Cal. <laughs> you know what they say. What? Kiss them in the screen porch in high Indian summer and marry before Christmas. That That's my say. motto, anyway. Oh. Is that what you're going to do to Mama? Yes, ma'am, and I've been working up to it all day. Well, I think you better hurry because the news is that Jared's on his way over, Cal. Dang, Jared, I thought he wasn't going to get here till late tonight. Well, Mom said that he's coming over for dinner. She's upstairs changing. Why don't you just run on up in there, catch your unawares? <laughs> no, thank you, Craig. I believe I got better things to do with my time than wasted watching that Jasper butter up in. Oh, excuse me. Take it now. Cal, wait, oh, hold on. Don't get your feathers hello. ruffled. Oh, well. I don't blame him. Do you blame him? No. I know what he means by wasting your time. Come here. I'm going to go and say hi to Lily and I'll, we'll go to dinner, all right? Oh, Lily's not here, which reminds me. We've got to stick around until Derek gets here, because I've got to leave him a message from Lily. Where did Lily go? She went to the cottage. Mama said that, um, that Derek got clear of the trouble he was in and that Lily was ecstatic. But I'll tell you, Craig, she did not look ecstatic to me. That's kind of strange, huh? Yeah. So, oh, wait a minute. How's Emily taking the hearing this on tomorrow? She's pretty tense, but she went to the gym to work out with Sean, so I think it'll be okay. So that means Brock's still in Chicago, right? Yeah. Which means he's going to stay there till the hearing's over, right? That makes Why? sense. Why? Hello. Oh. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hey. Mr. Freight. 
Congratulations. Bye. I heard you got third of all the yes, trouble. I think finally. it's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Where's my wife? <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to tell you that she went to the cottage to see Jeff. What? Why did she? Why the hell did she do that when I told her not to? What's that about? Oh, I thought I heard Derek's voice. You did. And I told him that Lily went to the cottage to see Jeff, and he just bolted out of here. Well, that's strange. Jeff? I wonder what happened. Let me call the cottage and see if I can find out. Pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, I guess you brought them. Who? Cal. Cal? Hi, Glass. Where is it? Jerry and Lena. Sorry, what are you doing here? Let's just double checking. Well, there's no need. I've gone over everything. Uh, everything's working perfectly. Look, we better get out of here. I'm going back to the station for my cover. You have you got one? Yes. But now's the time for improvisation, Jeffrey. I'm sorry, old man, but I have no choice. Sorry, dear boy. It's not your partner. I'll never forget how happy Lily looked at Derek's call. Well, oh, no. that's how I want to feel. You know, seeing them and seeing your family really makes me see how much more I want out of life than my parents had. You know, they were always involved with someone else, always talking about how terribly civilized it was, and they stayed out all night, slept till noon. <laughs> Not like life on the farm. No. You'll never know how lucky you are. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, uh, didn't always feel that way. I'm starting to realize that being rich isn't all there is in life. Didn't you once say that most of your family's wealth was your mother's? <laughs> it's the only reason Daddy fought the divorce. But he didn't have a leg to stand on. It's too bad in a way because losing access to mother's fortune made Daddy become very bitter and, and cynical. He started uh, urging Derek and me to ask for huge sums of money from Mother so we could give it to him. And then when Derek started to refuse, I think that's when the real trouble started between them. Well, you're a vision of loveliness. It's just a change from seeing me in my work clothes. Ah, and I enjoyed every minute of that. I think the kids enjoyed the television room as well, don't you? Even though it's not finished. What's the matter? I'm just trying to figure you out. I guess I never will. Well, that's half the fun of getting to know someone, isn't it? There's still many things I don't understand about you, but that doesn't keep me from wanting this dance. Oh. Oh. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Reyes. Would you like a table? Yes, I'll be dining alone tonight, but perhaps you could drop by my table and keep me company. I think that can be arranged. Follow me. Tony, I sure comes here a lot. Oh, he's a creep. I still hope I can find some proof that he was in contact with my dad and never reported it. Good evening, hey, Charles. Hey. Oh, hi. Oh, no, How no, no please sit down. <laughs> How's your mom? I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't seen her. Really? Hal, uh, any more news on the case? Uh, no, but I think they're probably winding things up even as we speak. But what real difference does it make, Bill? Wait. Even if Emily lied about what she burned in the sink that night, it doesn't change the fact that Stenbeck attacked her and that his son shot him to save her. Yeah, but what kept Paul for almost 20 minutes before calling us to report that he killed his father? And why did they call a lawyer first? Well, they were both shaken up. They didn't know what to do, and Emily suggested a lawyer. Why would James attack Emily as she was coming out of the shower? I mean, he went there, presumably, to get Paul and convince him to go away with him. I mean... 
Why would he attack Emily knowing that that would turn Paul against him all the more? You know, that puzzled me, too. Why would he attack a woman whose old love letter he carried around in his briefcase? Well, Emily said he was crazed that night because, well, she refused to help him with Paul. Yeah, yeah, but crazy enough to want to kill her on him. I've also wondered how Stenbeck knew uh, Paul was going to be there when Emily said she didn't tell him what she claimed she didn't. Maybe he didn't know. Maybe he went there to intimidate Emily into helping him, and that's what was going on when Paul walked in. Well, I don't think we're going to come up with any more answers tonight. I'd like to go over the transcript of Barbara Ryan's trial. What do you want to see that for? Because both Paul and Miss Stewart testified in that case. I'd like to see what they said at that time. I'll call my office and have it sent over. McCloskey! Oh, sweetheart. No, no, we're just winding it up. It won't be long now. Well, don't you worry about me. How can I help it when you've been working such long hours? Well, right, but if I don't see you soon, you just plan on another phone call or even a personal visit. Well, I really wish that Julie did come for lunch. Then at least we could have All spoken right. to her, talked to her. Well, I can understand her not coming since Andy wasn't going to be here. Mom, I know that you're worried about Dan, but thank heavens this will all be over tomorrow. Until the next big case. Mom, I promise I'll get him in for a physical. Please do. Well, have you uh, reached any conclusions about Andy? Go on over to Chicago, get some guy to put out a contract on what he's... Oh. Oh, no, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I, one thing, I've got to stop blowing my stack. I don't think that's helping anything. And if we don't figure out some way to get him to move back here, well, then... The most we can hope for, I guess, just, just to keep the lines of communication open, you know, open, as they say, you know? Well, if you really do feel that way, then... Well, what about we try one other thing? What? We could go over to the Mona Lisa. I'm sure both of them are over there. And we could try to have a civil conversation with them. You want to come along, see what happens? Well, I, I mean, I suppose it's a pretty good idea. Well, there's still no answer at the cottage. Hmm. Well, it's not unusual. I mean, the traffic's horrendous. It took me twice as long as usual to get here. Oh, baby, now don't worry. Lily call us if she needs us, and Derek went off after her. I know. I mean, I don't know why I'm so uneasy about Lily. It's just that... Well, she was doubting Derek all day. Why? Because of the disappearance of his assistant? Well, sort of. I mean, when they heard about that, Derek told her that he had had an affair with his assistant. Before he met Lily. I mean, I'm glad he was honest with her, but just, I don't know, he's been acting very strange lately. I mean, wanting to take her off to Europe without telling anybody, without letting her tell anybody? Wow. That's a little more than strange, Ima. Well, it is, and... And before Derek was cleared, Lily thought that his running away had something to do with Karen's disappearance. I don't know. Oh, and now she's in Europe, which is where Derek wants to take Lily, and you think there's a connection there? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, why don't you guys go to dinner? Go ahead. Go. No, fine. We'll stick around till we hear from Lily, although I'm sure everything is probably fine and okay. I'm surprised Lucinda hasn't been calling every five minutes. She's been worried about these European plans since I was over there. Thank you, Matthew. Cheers. You're welcome. Well, I didn't do too badly, did I? And neither did I. Would you like a drink, Mrs. Dick? No, she doesn't have the time. Oh. Beauty, brains, wit, and charm. All in one delicious body. What a rare find. And money. You left out money. All right. <laughs> If I'm not allowed to have a drink, I want to eat because I'm famished. Yes, it's 8.23. That'll give us seven minutes to get to the Mona Lisa and make it in time for our reservations. You're very precise this evening. Well, I was trying to be. But tonight, especially so, because I must do. This is the night I intend to make you forget all about that stodgy doctor husband of yours. Oh, I can't wait to enjoy your efforts in that direction. Oh. I think I ought to call Lily and... No, 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 no. Let's, um... Let's call them later, huh? Give him a little time alone. Okay. I'm so relieved, you don't know. <laughs> I was going to go down to the cottage and confiscate Lily's passport. Jeff? Jeff?
God. Thank God. I'm gonna call for help. I'm gonna call for help. Oh God. Thank God you're right. I have to know though. Did Derek do this to you? It's okay. into the office, I overheard Derek telling Jeff Dolan to stay away from you, or he'd kill him. Oh, I, I'm so sorry, Jeff. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't worry about the hearing tomorrow, okay? I'll try. It's gonna be fine. And it looked like there had been foul play because the woman left her things in the motel and she never checked out. So the first thing tomorrow, i got to find out who set it up. It's kind of strange that nobody noticed her on the plane to Italy, though, because she had two heads, one blonde and one brunette. Something tells me you're not listening. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just keep wondering what tomorrow holds for Paul. At least he's not here with Emily tonight. <sighs> Thank you, Lassie. Uh, my pleasure. You think you might be able to find time to have dinner with me later? I think that can be arranged. Hello, Duncan. Hello. I'm glad to hear the Freedom Fighters are making headway in Montega. Yes, your contribution helped a great deal. I wanted to talk to you about that before the grand jury hearing tomorrow. When I came to you for information regarding Stenbeck's Island so that I could find Lilith, I gave you my word as a Scotsman that I wouldn't reveal my source. I want you to know that that promise still stands. Good. But I don't understand why you didn't try to find that island and Lilith. It seemed very important to you. Well, I realized that there was something right here, far more important to me. Hey, Shannon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like you wouldn't have to be alone if you didn't want to. That handsome man over there at Mr. Reyes's table is really giving you the eye. Oh, hi. Hello. We're about 12 minutes late, but I did make a reservation for 8.30. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, we'll have to seat you in the kitchen then. Right. What is she doing? She's a new hostess. She's doing a really good job, too. Now I see what Daddy's been up to. Will you excuse me? I want to check my service and then say hello to Daddy. Sure. This one's for Cal. Cal, would you be having dinner with Mama? Yeah, well. So, that's the background info on uh, Derek and Niles Mason. The accountants just sent it out. What's it say? It ain't good. It looks like the old man's got some kind of an antiquities business, but it must be pretty small potatoes because he's got no credit rating at all. And the son's business, so like Mason Investments, it's a two-man operation, grosses about a hundred thousand dollars a year. It's got no credit history. I gotta call the farm. Yes. <laughs> sure, I'm glad your plane arrived safely. Yes, Jerry. Well, 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 listen, since you're going to be a little late, why don't I make dinner? Okay. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hi, -bye. Jared's at his hotel, and he, he's going to arrive shortly. Oh, I don't think so. Not unless they clear up that accident. The traffic loosens up. Oh, you two, why don't you go? <laughs> Look, I'm sure it's just my own paranoia that's making me worry about Lily. Go on, go on, go on. Have some dinner. Your time together is so precious. You've got this trip. Go. You, you know, you know whose fault it is? You've seen she says it's not. She's Let's sending just go me eat. off on this flight, trip. I've been not her fault. Well, relax. I know. I'm trying. Yeah, sure. Well, what are you worried about? Oh, I, I just wish that Craig's situation were a little less complicated. Well, maybe that's Lily. Hello? Iva. It's Caleb. Is Lily there? She's at the cottage. Why? Did Derek go with her? No, he's on his way there. Why all the questions? Because I just found out that Niles and Derek Mason aren't as wealthy as they're pretending to be. How did you find out? From whom? Cal told me. And I'm really worried. I, I think that Derek's been after her money all along.
Well, can we go pick up Adam now and then go home and get some rest before tomorrow's big day? I can't make you go ahead. Oh, uh, no. I am not about to go home and trust to luck that I'm going to see you again before dawn. Here we go. When Emily Stewart testified in Barbara Ryan's trial, defense counsel Griffin asked what she did from the time she and Paul Stenbeck left the house in uh, Ruxton Hills and were found later by the police at Betsy Andropoulos' cabin. Betsy is Emily's half-sister. They admitted they went there together to wait. Ms. Stewart went on to say, I was afraid James was dead, and because I didn't want anyone to find his letters to me, I burned them all as soon as Paul and I got to the cabin. Pretty hard to burn the same thing twice. Why don't I cut class tomorrow so I can be with you at the court? No, no, say? no there's no sense in both of us falling behind in school. I'm, I don't know if I'll ever catch up. Sure you will, big brain like you. Well, that's my point. You don't have the brains that I have, so you won't be able to catch up. Can I get you guys anything else? Oh. Yeah, I would mm. love a cheeseburger. Me too. Everything. Great. Oh. My treat. No way. Yes. Hello, Julie. Hi, Andy. Hi, everybody. Uh, we, uh, well, I was wondering if we might have a kind of uh, civilized, relaxed conversation. Kim and myself, Julie, and you, Andrew. What's your husband doing with that attractive woman? Not much. An ex-wife, Andy's mom. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you two doing? Fine. What happened to Caleb? Um, I don't know. He got upset about something and said he had to go out to the cottage to talk to Derek and Lily. I think he may be dead. My husband did it. Please hurry. Lily! Lily, really? we have to get out of here right away. I'm not going anywhere with you. Lily, please. I saw Jeff in the cellar. I know you tried to kill him. What? No. No, Lily, I'll explain everything, but we have to get oh, out of here. Go with me! Believe me, believe me, Lily, you're... Trust me, I love you. Lily, I didn't kill Jeff, my father did! It was all a plan to get your money, and I was in on it at the beginning, but I refused to go along, and because I fell in love with you, and, 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 and it's true, and it's also true that I love you. Now run! Run as fast as you can! on most of the CBS stations. Inviting you to join us again Monday for As the World Turns. This is.